The Dutch till. Dutch till? The Dutch till. What's you, the uh, Dutch till? This thing? The yeah. thing Instagram girls do? That one? <laughs> uh, is that what it is though? <laughs> It goes the other way though. This way? Like no, that? No, no, no. Like, what? You're not doing oh, a self it's, it's like an, it's actual cinematography. Oh. When it's facing, when it's not a selfie, like in a movie, they would tilt the camera for some reason. I didn't realize that was a thing. For the, those of you who are wondering, Jonathan actually has taken like film classes and isn't just like terrible at making videos like me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go make a video about uh, me giving you a tour of sale. Now it's on video, so we can put this in the video about us making the plan. There you go. We're we're currently getting uh, tacos, and then we're about to go do the tour after this. Yeah. So how are the tacos? Yeah, just I really like the salsa. That was good. So tour step one is this place right here. Uh, this is where I lived during my internship and Facebook's provided housing. Here we've got the Jeff Bezos Center for Innovation and then I live over there and then that blue thing up there right there that's Facebook. Uh, bonus points if you know which second thread video was filmed right there. Well, I'm Jonathan Humber. This is my seven million dollar house. Welcome to Architectural Digest. So, first we're gonna look. Here's my private bathroom over here. I like to see the city while I shower. So uh, that's why you got the windows there. And uh, you can see that's the ladder that you have there. Look right here. Look at the dolly. That's how I get around the city. Uh, you're my boat. This is this is the ladders right here. Oh, that's the ladder. That's how I got to the upstairs. But yeah, you got some big legs. I, I move I move the ladder to the other side daily. There's Google. Google. Uh, right here, this is Google part two. Don't you love the high quality audio on these videos? Yeah, that's my favorite part. I, I come for the audio, stay for the story. Uh, have you ever told you the story about why Seattle's road design is so terrible? No, but there's like a story for every single city. It's like different every time. Now, feel free to fact check me. It might not be a harm center, but this is what I've been told. The Seattle government decided they need someone to design their city. So they hire a designer. But what's better than hiring one designer? Hiring three. <laughs> so they hired three designers to design the city. The problem was the first designer absolutely hated the second designer. They did not get along at all. And the third designer got so fed up with having to like moderate the disagreements between the first two, they quit how we did the project. <laughs> so then these first two designers are making this design of the city, but they just will not work with each other at all. Yeah. So they make these two designs, but their like city designs just do not take the others into account. And they each only design like two thirds of the city. But there's some overlap where they both designed this part, and it's just like, no, the other person's stupid, don't listen to him, listen to me. <laughs> So then, the city council is left with these two designers, and they have these two designs which don't match up, but also aren't complete on their own. So they decide, we're just going to superimpose the two and use all the roads that are in both. So the city design makes no sense, and in order to actually fit buildings in places, they have to be right up against the road. So you get like the road and the sidewalk right next to each other, and then like buildings just like next to it. This is downtown Seattle. So it's just a disaster. Yeah. Works for like 10 years or something, I don't know, some amount of time. Huh. And then, uh, this whole thing has like massive plumbing problems. So they, oh, need, to they need to replace the plumbing. Yeah. Of course, they didn't leave any space for this when they designed it. Uh, because the buildings are right up against the road. Yeah. So in order to replace the plumbing, they have to put the plumbing above the sidewalk. So you got like the sidewalk, and on top of it, you got the plumbing. Now, this is the pain for all the people who want to walk on the sidewalk. Yeah. And you still have to have a sidewalk because it's a downtown city. People yeah. walk from place to place. Yeah. So they decide to build another sidewalk on top of the plumbing, which to go. some degree makes sense. Yeah. 
The problem is, now in order to cross the road, you have a sidewalk that's like six feet above road level. So you have to climb down a ladder, cross the road, and climb up another ladder every time you need to cross the road. Yeah. On top of this, you've essentially now just created a canal where your road needs to be, because it's now just like below yeah. surface level. Yeah. So now, even though they just replaced all the plumbing, all the roads just flood constantly because they're like underground. Okay. So they essentially build a second road above the road. <laughs> So you got old road <laughs> with sidewalks, plumbing on top, new sidewalks, and new road. <laughs> Which means just across Seattle, you have all of these underground tunnels of like where the road used to be. Yeah. And the city has just like built a layer on top because the first try at the city was a disaster. The side effect is you just have all of these random five-way intersections where it's just impossible to do anything, and there's no roundabout, no stoplights, just a bunch of cars that just like all go there and all want to go somewhere at once. <laughs> Story time with David Jonathan. Being afraid watching what? I did. I did. That was actually uh, pretty freeze impressive. Frame, freeze frame right there with my finger. We'll, put it, we'll put it right oh, here. And then I have the audio of me talking right now with a crowd on my head touching it. I'm making this. I didn't need it hard for you. <laughs> Everyone, I'm Tim Cook. Welcome to my. $333 million mansion. Alright, so if you have seen my latest video, Jonathan, yeah, that uh, you know what this place is. Oh, this right here is, uh, as you would all know, uh, uh, as you would all know, this is obviously Facebook. Okay. So you see up here, you see that? Am I gonna freeze frame and zoom in? Yes, I see it. You see what it says? Yeah, we don't want the red arrow. Pointing no, with the red arrow? What are you talking about? Oh, it says good morning. Oh my god. Oh my god. How long do you think that took? At least 30 minutes. <laughs> it was worth every second. Oh, it was like a Friday oh evening. I had nothing god. better to do with my life. It's like, yeah. Post it notes. Yeah, post notes. All right, here's a question. So why have we been wandering all around Seattle today? Uh, uh I should see. Big announcement. Which is gonna be, I am leaving Seattle. Whoa, and I'm staying. We're switching apartments. <laughs> oh, no, it's actually a shoe commercial this whole time. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeff Bezos, smoking in my $7 billion city. I own this place. Architectural Digest. Boom. See, the difference is, although uh, you do have hair, Jeff Bezos knows how to speak. Uh huh. But I don't pay for my wife. All right, you have two prisoners. You've got you and you have another prisoner. Both of these prisoners are on a train to jail. Now, uh, you oh, and the same other train. What? Same, same train. That same. one right there. Okay. Both of you are going to jail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you get to jail, I am the jail guard, and I am trying to get both of you killed. And in David Land, what you need to do to kill someone is just have them guess the color of the hat they're, they're wearing incorrectly. Oh, well, I don't like this one. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is what it is. Okay. So, you and your partner have to agree on some plan. So, each of you get a hat color. Each hat is either white or black. The hat colors can be different, they can be the same, they can both be white, one can be white, it can be black, whatever. Okay. So, what each of you want to do is guess the color of your hat correctly. Okay. Now, you can, ahead of time, come up with whatever plan you want to try and guess your hat color correctly. Okay. You can, like, both guess white, for instance. Yeah. I will hear what your plan is, because you have to tell me, because I'll be spying on you. Okay. I'll know what your plan is. Yeah. I'm going to assign hat colors so that as many of you as possible will guess them correctly. Is, it, is there only two of us? There are just two of you, yes. Okay. Um, and you want to come up with some strategy so that as many of you as possible guess the hat color correctly and get to escape. So the question is, one, what strategy should you use, and two, how many people can escape if you play optimally uh, against my evil strategy of trying to kill both of you. So for those of you who have been thinking about this and have come up with the solution way before Jonathan, harder version of this problem is instead of two people with two hat colors, you have 100 people with 100 hat colors. 
Now again, there can be duplicate hat colors. You don't necessarily have to use all of them. Up to you. Yeah, so maybe one person gets the apps and the other person doesn't. What does the other person guess? The actual person's hat. Same? Yeah. So one gets the opposite, one gets the same? Yeah. Would that be right? Uh, I think. Okay. So if they, we both have black, one person would say white, the other person would say black, then we'd be good. But the same thing for white. If we're opposite, I have black, he is white. I would say white, and he would say white, which means we're good, and just vice versa. So this means we're good. That's right. It does work. You want an easier way of proving it? Yes. Either you both have the same color hat, or you have opposite color hats. So, fun fact in the comments, solve the version with 100 hats, 100 people, 100 colors. Hey, I'm Mike Zuckerberg. Welcome to my 7 to 7, 62 million dollar crib. This is my backyard. Here's my front yard. Pan the camera. <laughs> I'm asking myself about <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up. You have to ask yourself you're not ready. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> Good luck. Hello, I'm David from the local homeless shelter. I live in this box. I, I don't technically own it, but this is my seven dollar crib. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a Q and A. I want to. I want to. I want to be in your Q and A. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. I don't know if we have any good questions, but we'll see. Uh, we can just make up a question from a random user name. We'll like make a make our own account, ask the question, yeah. and then say, "Ah, oh, this very insightful <laughs> person." <laughs> Actual good question here. So, uh, Rajdeep Gosh says. Beginning in CP, competitive programming here, could you explain what fast scanner class does in comparison to the standard standard scanner object or buffered reader object? Jonathan, you want to take that one? Oh, uh, all right. So you know, I really would like to answer this question, but as a C plus plus veteran, you know, I don't want to misinform the gracious community. So I'm just gonna pass this one off to to David here. All right, as a Java veteran, I can handle this one. So, good question, Raj Deep. Uh, great to have you in the competitive programming community, first of all. Love getting new members, that's how we stay alive, right? Uh, okay, what does FastScanner do? Well, it turns out it really is basically just the same thing as Buffered Reader. Um, you can use Buffered Reader wherever you use FastScanner. The nice part about it is that it works the same way Scanner does. So, Buffered Reader doesn't have like a next, it only has next line and you need to like parse that and do some annoying stuff with string tokenizers. So when you have a fast scanner, all of that stuff is compartmentalized for you. And uh, it's very convenient because then you don't have to worry about any of the details. So you have your fast scanner, you want the next int, you call next int. Uh, additionally, I usually put next array in it because that's a really common thing to do on code forces, read the next array. So it speeds up coding sometimes. Thanks, guys, Steve. Is that the end of the video? That's the end of the video. All right, thank you for watching. Are we gonna Peace have a, we gonna have an end here. Play, Are we gonna have an end play screen? An end play screen? With the, I don't with know. The, with the things that say. Leave us a comment if you have an Subscribe here. End Watch my last screen. video here. I feel like such a YouTuber when I do that, and I don't want to be a YouTuber. All right, so we'll just have them listening to this with no things, so they can't actually click on the last video. Yes. Now you have to go all the way back to the YouTube channel. The only people who are allowed to subscribe to my channel are the ones smart enough to figure out how to click on the subscribe button. I think we'll settle with that. I believe Everybody that. else, not allowed. I we don't We don't want you here. Yeah. This video is way too long. It's going to be like a 23 minute video. No, nah, it's going to be six minutes. No, like, <laughs> so much. Guys, this is going to be like a full feature, feature length documentary. Ugh. Well, you got to know David and I. Worst video of all time. Oh my god. <laughs> there was no point. We got like a ton of footage, so. Here we are.